One of the most notable sustainability innovation is taking place in farming by moving from wide outdoor spaces to urban indoor farms. In the United States, it is estimated that urban farms account for almost 15% of the country's farms. A leader among them is a six-year-old startup called 80 Acres Farms, a vertical farming operation in Hamilton, Ohio. It has rapidly grown to eight locations in four states. All of them use 100% renewable energy, zero pesticides, and requires 97% less water consumption compared to regular farms. Founders Mike Selkind and Tisha Livingston are working to reinvent farming for the 21st century. Their accomplishments recently got recognized as one of the world's most innovative companies by Fast Company magazine. Let's learn from Mike and Tisha about 80 Acres Farms. When Mike and I started, we recognized that um, there is a lack of fresh, healthy produce out in our grocery stores here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we also recognized that um, most of our lettuce comes from California and it's old and tired by the time it gets here. We decided that we wanted to change that. We wanted to change the way that farming happens today. We wanted to be able to create a company that provides fresh, healthy produce in a very sustainable way and do it in our community, for our community, and by our community. We recognized that there wasn't any one technology out there that really solved for the problems that we needed. And so what we did was we, we looked all over the world and we looked at what technology and what parts of the technology seemed to work or be proven. And so we decided that we would bring all of that technology together, slam it together in the best vertical farm we could and uh, see what would happen. Well, what we found was that when you slam best of together, sometimes it doesn't work very well. And so we had to figure out and tear it back apart and then figure out how to put it together so it worked. And then we found that there were parts of the technology that was not, um, it wasn't commercially available, it wasn't even out there. So that's where we had to innovate. So we slammed the technology together. We brought the best of, we brought a Cado into um, the joint venture with Priva and 80 Acres, the three of them forming this technology company and really focusing our innovation on the gaps in the vertical farming space. If we think about the water sustainability aspect, we use a lot less water because we've designed this system with our sister company, Infinite Acres, that is a completely closed loop system where we grow the crops, we feed the plants, the water and the nutrients the plants need to photosynthesize optimally. And then we capture as the plants uptake that water, they evaporate whatever they don't need, whatever they don't turn into dry matter. We can capture that evaporation and send it through our dehumidification units, clean that water and feed it back in redose it with nutrients and feed it back in. So there's a completely closed loop water cycle that we're using. Um, so nothing goes to waste. The only water that the plants use gets utilized and everything else gets recirculated, cleaned, re-neutralized, added nutrients to it and sent back to the plants. It's, it's an incredibly, um, sustainable way to farm. Nothing gets wasted. The fact that we are so sustainable and we use so little water enables us to farm almost anywhere in the world. If you think about the Middle East with all the water diplomacy and the needs to grow crops in sandy soils where water is scarce, we can grow there. Every part of the world has deficiencies in certain resources. We can farm in parts of the world that have virtually no water. We can farm in parts of the world where soils are depleted. We can farm in parts of the world that have pest issues that prohibit a lot of crops to grow in normal natural lands. We can farm in parts of the world where land is so scarce, places like Singapore, where you're landlocked and most of your food is being brought in and imported. Because of the modularized, sustainable nature of our farms and our ability to go vertical, literally stack a field on top of a field on top of a field on top of a field, have proper airflow through it to capture all the evaporation, recirculate everything, and create this wonderful closed-loop system, 
we can stack those fields in the middle of cities. We can stack them close to distribution centers of our customers. And we really don't use any more natural resources than the plants need to grow optimally. And then we stress those plants to get proper stress response to get this nutritional value out of plants that normally you cannot consistently get anywhere else. So not only can we grow crops anywhere in the world, we can also grow the highest quality that nature will ever allow. In nature, outdoors, you might get lucky and you might get this phenomenal taste in blueberry, or strawberry, or whatever you're growing. And the question is, how do you repeat? How do you repeat that performance? How do you get that next strawberry, blueberry to be perfect? Well, all the conditions will have changed. So the grower doesn't control anything. The grower is constantly trying to adjust to the natural environment. And it takes incredible growers to do so. And usually there are way too many variables and they can't get that consistent high quality product. So growing outdoors is kind of like playing golf, right? You get that one incredible golf shot and it keeps you coming back and you keep, you keep growing and you keep trying and trying and trying, but you can't hit that hole in one every time. You got it once in your life, you remember that great flavor. The beauty with indoor farming is we can, we can get our hole in one every time we go out. It's always very challenging to give advice to budding entrepreneurs because there's so many things that you have to do and there's so much advice. But the first piece of advice is you have to be gritty. You have to believe in your idea. You have to be passionate. You have to surround yourself with a phenomenal team that will never quit because you will hear no a hundred times a day. It doesn't matter how great the idea is. All ideas are done the day about execution. And execution is all about doing a thousand little things right every single day. And that's the definition of grit in a startup. You don't have armies of smart people around you doing everything. You have a few very smart, dedicated, caring people who are willing to do everything and anything to make it happen. And surrounding yourself with those people and just executing from morning to sundown creates great businesses. If I could think of one thing that I would um, impart on future entrepreneurs, it would be fail fast, uh, cheap, and with tremendous insights. Don't be afraid to make decisions. Don't be afraid to go out and do something small to see if it works. And then if you fail, it's okay. Learn from the failure and then pick yourself up and move on to the next thing. Uh, certainly in our pro process and our progress uh, to date, we've had plenty of failures, but our failures were turned into some of the, the biggest uh, bits of knowledge and insight and in how to improve our business and has made us what we are today. So don't be afraid to fail, but do it uh, quickly and learn from your mistakes. Mm -hmm.